Admit it, you're meat gazing. And if you're vegan, shame on you. Only kidding, because whether you're openly carnivorous, an omnivore, or an in-the-closet meat voyeur, you're going to want to stick around for this one. Primal, yet refined and undeniably delicious, today's recipe is steak tartare. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and for a full list of ingredients and their amounts, check the description. We're going to start with some minced shallots. Since we're basically making a meat ceviche, you're going to notice some similarities. And if you, like I once did, hesitate at the idea of eating raw meat, just keep telling yourself, it's only sushi. For this recipe, we're using two tablespoons of shallot and two tablespoons of minced red onion. And it would not be tartare without the tartness of capers, the one ingredient any good steak tartare recipe uses. Mince two tablespoons and add those to the same bowl as the shallot and onion. In another small bowl, we're going to add one egg yolk, one tablespoon olive oil, one teaspoon balsamic vinegar, and then zest one half lemon plus one tablespoon lemon juice, in that order. Otherwise you'll be trying to zest a flaccid lemon, and no one likes a flaccid lemon. And finally, two tablespoons Dijon mustard and one half teaspoon each sea salt and cracked black pepper. Mix that thoroughly, and then we're going to set it aside, because it is now time to whip out our meat. Oh yeah, any kind will do. But just make sure it's been frozen at minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 7 days, which will effectively kill any possible parasites. This technique is recommended for both beef and fish. And today, before you get to slicing, make sure that it's very cold, near frozen, so that it minces easier. As you can see, I started with thin steaks, which I'm cutting into thin strips. Once I'm done doing this, I'm going to start mincing. In the end, we want to end up with what basically looks like ground beef, minus any connective tissue or large chunks of fat. Leaner steaks definitely work better here. So now, let's put that into a mixing bowl so that we can add our prepared ingredients. What starts out as an ordinary bowl of raw meat is about to get a meat makeover and transform into something magnificent and new. The rare combination of flavors between the onions, capers, and the acidy tang of this dressing is what makes tartare a world-renowned delicacy. I've seen the eyes of guests roll back in their heads involuntarily at the first taste of this refined dish. So before we plate up, we're going to mince some scallions and get our mold ready. If you have a ring mold, that's ideal, but I'm using a ramekin to show how well that works in a pinch. Spoon the tartare into the mold and then press down until it's firm. Then comes the moment of truth. Turn the mold over onto the center of a serving dish and then stand back and admire your work. But only for a moment because it's time to garnish. We've got bush, clover sprouts to be exact, mild earthy and with a crispness that's quite addictive. And here come the chives, both for flavor and effect. Yeah, just like that. So, tartare is traditionally eaten with toast, but salty tortilla, potato, or even pita chips are other great options. And finally, I'm going to drizzle olive oil and balsamic vinegar for dipping. Trust me, when you take that first bite, the clean, light taste is reminiscent of traditional ceviche, but it's much more. This dish strikes a balance between primal and extravagance, raw meat lavishly prepared. If there ever was such a thing as an opulent cave person, this would have been their dish for sure. As always, Thanks for watching.